Good morning. Welcome to St. Sylvester Church and our Mass celebration for the fourth Sunday of Easter. We extend a warm welcome to visitors and new parishioners. Please stop by our welcome station in the vestibule to learn more about our parish and to pick up a welcome booklet and registration form. Please take a moment to make sure your phone is off or on silent. The readings can be found on page 155 in the Breaking Bread book. Once again, that's page 155. And the words to the psalm are, The stone rejected by the builder has become the cornerstone. Please sing the psalm after me. The stone rejected by the builder has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Thank you. If you'd like to have your book ready, our opening song can be found at 543, Joyful, Joyful. And there is no children's liturgy today. Our opening song is number 543, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Please stand.
Good morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you come to call us to unity with the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to wash away our sinfulness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God, Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth is to be born. Father, lead us to share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Leaders of the people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord.
The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his mercy endures forever. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. The stone rejected by the builders has become the I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have been my Savior. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. The stone rejected by the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have been my Savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his kindness endures forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we we are God's children now. What we shall be has yet not been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and my know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches 
and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father. Gospel of the Lord. You know, my brothers and sisters, when I looked it up or Googled it, so to speak, there are thousands of images and pictures of the Good Shepherd. Probably one of the most popular, if not the most popular, image of Jesus. And they're all very similar. Now I was looking through them, and then something popped into my mind, and I recalled an, a photo I saw a while back, and I decided to look it up, and here it is. And I'm, maybe some of you can't see it on the uh, you know, edges of the church, so I'm going to walk around with it so that you can get a good look at it. Everyone get a look? Okay, well, I think this is the Good Shepherd. And so if I didn't give a homily, this says it all. But I don't want to disappoint you, so... <laughs> anyway. And you know, I, I asked Deacon Charlie, I said, uh, Deacon Charlie, who knows a lot about farm animals and farming and pastures and all that, I said, you think they might have uh, shampooed that lamb be before they put the lamb on the Pope's shoulders? I think they did. <laughs> Believe me, I've never seen a lamb this white before. Now, um, today in many parishes, they talk about vocations, which is a wonderful thing, a beautiful thing to talk about. But I don't think that is what today is about. Today is about focusing on the one shepherd. One shepherd. The one good shepherd. Jesus Christ. Our shepherd. There are not two shepherds or three shepherds. There are people who, you know, in imitation of Jesus, shepherd others. But those are still sheep. There's one shepherd of the sheep, Jesus Christ. Now, we call Jesus the good shepherd. What does it mean? How do we understand good, the good shepherd? I think it goes right over our head because we've heard it so many times, it's religious language, and so we glaze over like donuts and our brains drain out when we hear pious religious language. But I think 
there's reason for us to look at Jesus as the good shepherd. The really good shepherd. And it's because we are the sheep. Now, you think I don't know anything about sheep. I know a little bit of something about sheep, and I learned something about sheep. When I was in Ireland the first time, and we have pure Irish over here with Catherine Teagarden, and then we have a little bit of Irish over here that spends half of the year in Ireland. That, right? In Donegal. Where are you from, Catherine? In Ireland? Dublin. Dublin. She's a city girl. You're a country girl. Okay. Well, first time I went to Ireland with my friend, Father Joe Caffrey, we're driving around the countryside. Beautiful countryside. Incredible countryside. Maybe if you're there a long time, you get used to it. You don't appreciate it like anything. But you discover how green it is. And you can look at pictures all day and you'll never see how green Ireland is until you go there and different shades of green. Part of it, I think, is the rain, the soft days that they have, Catherine, as they call it. And there's another reason it's so green. So I'm driving around Father Joe through the countryside. We were, I forget where we were going, to some bed and breakfast. And uh, I'm fascinated with the sheep. Goats, sheep, they're everywhere. I kept saying, Joe, look at, my God, look at those sheep. Look at those goats. Look at the sheep. Look at, my God, look at them up there. You know, they're everywhere. And finally he pulls off the road. And he says, okay, get out of the car. I said, he's going to leave me in the middle of the country. Where am I going? He, I said, he said, no, no, no. He said, get out and get it out of your system. Go out there and meet your sheep. So I got out. And there was no one else around. No one. No one. Do shepherds have guns? Maybe, maybe they, no, I guess they don't. May, here they probably shoot you, I guess, but I don't know. So I start walking through the, the field, the pasture. And the first thing you discover is, you know, sheep eat a lot. And you know what you do when you eat a lot? And I don't know how to say this uh, diplomatically, but there's crap everywhere. You're stepping in it. You're stepping between it. You, you can't get around it. And it stinks. It stinks. And there, sheep make a lot of crap. They eat a lot, and they make a lot of crap. And there it is. And you don't see it until you get out of the car and you get out into the pasture and you start walking toward the sheep. Then you get a little close. Not too close, because you can't get too close. And you notice that they're not white and pure like, you know, ivory soap, like this glam. They're dirty. Sheep are dirty. You know, they say pigs are cleaner. We say pigs are dirty. They get a bad rap, right? No. Sheep are not clean. When you get up closer, they're not clean. And they stink. They really stink. And you can't get close to them because some of them are all together. And then all of a sudden, when you get too close, they all scatter. Right? They go this way, they go that way. Sometimes they're hurting, sometimes they're this way, that way. And it leads me to what Deacon Charlie taught me. Because I always thought cows were stupid. You know, ever do any cow tipping? Had a few drinks and go out into the pasture, try to tip over a cow? Raise your hand. Anyone? Yeah, they're over here. Very good. Okay. Well, I'm not going to tell my stories. Anyway. But he told me, he said, No, Father. Sheep are the most stupid of all. Sheep are stupid. They're dumb. Right? When you want them to go this way, they won't go that way. And then you turn around, and they're going that way. And when you want them together, they're all over the place. Right? And he said, yes, they get lost. You've you've got to corral them. 
Sometimes they have the sheepdogs, you know, we saw the sheepdogs. Brilliant, smart, incredible. How a dog or two can, they can corral, you know, hundreds and hundreds of sheep. But you know, my brothers and sisters, it's not very flattering for Jesus to call us sheep. And he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew about sheep. He knew about pastors. That was his cultural background. Sheep produce a lot of crap. They stink. They're not clean, and they're stupid. Just like us. Honestly, come to terms with it. You want to know how good the good shepherd is? Realize your imperfection. Realize and come to terms with your sin and your weakness and all the mistakes you've made, even though you think you're so smart and so much in control. You want to be autonomous. Sheep cannot be autonomous. They need to listen. They need to be led. And sometimes they need to be driven. And of course, as we can see here, in the end, we all have to be carried. We all have to be carried. And none of us here, or most of us, are not lambs. You want to see innocent pure lambs in a state of grace. The last Mass, we had three Sun Treasure boys make their first communion. You want to see the picture of grace and purity, right? And innocence. You look at their faces when they receive communion. That's a state of grace, believe me. Not the one sometimes we think about. That's purity and innocence. That's the Lamb. You and I, And believe me, me most of all, we are the dirty, smelly sheep who make a lot of crap and create a big mess and make a lot of mistakes. And you know, that's why we have this gospel on Good Shepherd Sunday, to drive home how good the Good Shepherd really is, because he lays down his life for us, the stinky sheep who who smell, who make a lot of problems, and who create a lot of conflicts, who commit a lot of sins, who are imperfect and weak. He lays down his life for us. You know, the most ancient image of Jesus in the early church, if you've been to Rome, you go into the catacombs, the many catacombs. I remember one in particular, I think Callistus, perhaps. I don't remember, but there's one there in the catacombs. And if you ever go to Rome, go to the catacombs. It's an incredible experience. You feel something there. But you look up, it's the burial place of the early Christians, right? You look up and you see like a fresco of a young man carrying a shepherd around his, carrying a, a sheep around his shoulders. The good shepherd, the earliest image of Jesus, the Good Shepherd, when the Christians saw that, they said, Jesus lifts us up, he carries us, he died for us, and he rose to life, and we will rise again if we place our faith and trust in him. He is our shepherd. That was the most beautiful image of Jesus in the early church. You know, but we have to come to terms with the fact that we are the sheep. Some of us are shepherds, yes, priests and bishops and, and uh, parents and pastoral ministers, and people who are leaders and caregivers. We're all shepherds in some sense. But before we are shepherds, and I think Pope Francis would realize this most of all, before we're shepherds, we're sheep. Before you can lead, you have to be led. And sometimes you have to be driven And sometimes, and many times, you have to be carried as this lamb is being carried. And so we have to come to the terms of the fact that it's not a flattering, nice, pretty picture to be a sheep. God is telling us who we truly are and what we're all about. That we are smelly, and we are dirty, and we are imperfect, and we are sinful. But you know, the beauty is, my brothers and sisters, before we ever lead anyone else in any capacity in our lives to recognize how good, how very good Jesus, our shepherd, 
really is. Because in spite of the fact that we are the sheep, He still lays down His life for us time and time and time again. He is the Good Shepherd. The really, really Good Shepherd. We are the sheep. We're not that good. But we know and we believe that His love, His love, the love of the Good Shepherd, makes us good. All the sheep now will stand and and say the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Through Jesus, our Good Shepherd, we bring to the Father all of our needs. That pastors and ministers guide their flocks with tender care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That governments carefully guard the safety and quality of food and water, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That young people preparing for confirmation and graduation be strengthened for a life of loving service through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christians spread the peace of Christ and the joy of Easter in every time and place, We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our military men, women, and their families find peace in the Good Shepherd. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That humankind recognizes and protects the most vulnerable in society, the unborn and the dying. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of this assembly share God's abundant feast with those who cannot be here, especially the sick and homebound. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. And now we offer our own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we thank you for being with us this morning and for hearing all of our prayers. Through Jesus, our Good Shepherd, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory song is number 607, Like a Shepherd, 607. Yeah. 
my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries so that the renewed renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our lasting joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, ever overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory. fount of all holiness. Make holy these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people, 
especially Donna and Clay Alshner, for whom this Mass is offered. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, the blessed Apostles, St. Sylvester, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await our blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity according to your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to one another now a sign of Christ's peace. George, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold Jesus, our Good Shepherd, who takes away our sins and grants us peace. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Our first communion song is number 361. Take and eat. Three, six, one. This is my love given up for 
first and last of living one. I am the one who died that you might live. I am the bride who missed my wedding song. You are my bride, come to the marriage feast. Take and eat, take and eat. This is my body given up to you. Take and drink, take and drink. This is my blood. Well, good morning once again, and a very special welcome to any new parishioners who may be with us for the first time. We're happy you're here, and we hope that you feel very much at home here in your new parish. And for those who are vacationing or visiting here in beautiful Navarre Beach, a very warm welcome to you. We hope you consider this your parish when you're away from home and always come to celebrate Mass with us. In terms of the sheep, you know, sometimes you've heard this, I've heard this many times, People don't want to go to church. They say, it's just a bunch of sinners and hypocrites, right? Just a whole bunch of sinners and hypocrites in church. And I always say to them, well, come on along. There's room for one more. <laughs> so that, anyway. Okay, some announcements. Three electric wheelchairs have been donated to the Knights of Columbus. 
They're used, but they're in very good working order and are, are on display now in the Paris Center. And they're free to anyone who may need one, or your family, or your neighbor, or someone in the community you know needs a, um, an electric wheelchair. So a night of Columbus will be there to answer any questions you have about the wheelchairs. And if you know someone, I'm sure they'd help you to get it there. And the Knights have trucks and they have ways of getting uh, things to people. So I'm sure they'd be glad to help you. Um, this morning, the uh, Knights of Columbus have a pancake breakfast in the Parish Center for us. Uh, since we're in the Easter season, uh, we're back to that, and we appreciate their efforts, their hard work, and, and uh, it's a complimentary breakfast, so just come on over. There's no ticket price. If you want to give them a donation, they're not out to make a profit. They're just out to keep the breakfast going, so they, they turn that right back into the, uh, the budget to plan for future breakfast. So anything you give uh, will be gratefully accepted. So right after Mass, uh, uh, pancake breakfast, right over in the Paris Center. And of course, if you're visiting here, you, you're most welcome to come over. Please come over. You, everyone's invited. Finally, uh, just to give you a heads up on the Catholic Sharing Appeal campaign, I kind of let it go by the wayside for Holy Week and Easter. We have uh, risen to the level where we've reached and uh, extended beyond our goal a little bit. And uh, that's great. That's wonderful. I had no doubts about that. But that doesn't satisfy me because participation is everything. And uh, we still are not at the level of pledges we were uh, last year. And the diocese gives us something called a rainbow report, color-coded report. And just in a moment, uh, I'll run through it with you. Uh, there's a color for people who pledged last year and pledged this year. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Then there's, there's a category where people from last year increased their pledge. What? Fantastic. We're so surprised and grateful that you did that. That really helps, especially with the shortfall at times. And then uh, there are new pledges, of course. New pledges are great, wonderful, never made one before. New parishioners, perhaps, have stepped up to the mark and made a pledge, made a commitment. Thank you so much uh, for doing your part. And um, then there's folks that, well, quite honestly, they, they never do anything. You know, we, and we carry them. We, we always, we carry them. We have to carry them. They show up for baptisms, we baptize them. They show up for marriages, we marry them. They show up to be confirmed, we confirm them. We wheel them in finally and put them right there, sprinkle holy water on them and take them to the graveyard. And at that point, we hope we get something from them, but we don't. But we still love them and care for them and we care. That's just the way it is, that's what we do. But then there's the green section, and I, I, I'm zeroed in on the green section. That's all of you folks, great folks, who last year, uh, you made a commitment, and this year you haven't done it yet. And I think many of you want to, and perhaps you will. Maybe you've forgotten over Easter, or maybe uh, you've gotten busy. Maybe it's sitting on the desk. Maybe your dog ate your pledge card. I don't know. But whatever it is, you got a second letter, I think, from the bishop, or a third letter. It's time, you know, to step up to the mark, please, and let's get it done. And close out the campaign because now all the money comes to us in our parish. It all comes back to us. After goal, money comes to us. So it helps our parish. It really does. So please step up to the mark. If you can do what you did last year, fantastic. If you can't, if you need to decrease, wonderful. We still are grateful that you're willing to uh, make a play. Anything, anything, even a small is, is together makes a big difference. So if you do that, we'd appreciate it. If not, I'm going to have to waste my time, and I, I'll do it if I have to, to write letters to you and to, and to call upon you by phone and all this stuff. I'll have to do robocalls and all this, all this stuff. Come on, folks. I, I, my time I can spend doing other important things, you know, visiting people or going to the nursing home or whatever. 
but if I have to spend my, spin my wheels doing that, let's just do it. Please get it done. You folks in the green section, just step up to the mark if you can and make your pledge so that we can close out our campaign for our diocese and also for the benefit of our parish. So we, uh, we hope to see you over for the, um, for the pancake breakfast. Again, you're most welcome to come over. Brian, come over here. Just come over here. Just step up for a moment. Brian, we have a new cantor. Brian, let me do it. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you, Brian. Really, you're very good. Thank you. And he, and, he, and he did two masses in a row, so I'm, I'm really appreciative for that. So, job well done. Thank you. Thank you're, you. you're fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. <laughs> Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. By the way, uh, I'm no, you may be curious about these yellow roses. Well, the Sun Treasure kids who received their first communion brought these up during the offertory procession. And at the end, I sat down with them here after communion. And um, I asked them, I said, well, um, how, what did the host taste like? What did the... And one of them said, uh, just like bread. And then I said, asked another one, what, what did the host taste like to you? And uh, sharp kid, I mean, he said, he said, Father, it tasted like pure Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so I got these, so I said, I, I do like roses, honestly, one of my favorite flowers, but I said, I got to ask you, are these for me or are they for Jesus? And the fellow who said pure Jesus said, well, Father, um, how about... Um, half for you and half for Jesus. <laughs> so I'm going to leave one for Jesus and take one home for me. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go forth, our closing song is number 442. How can I keep from singing? Four, four, two. Yeah.